Hello everyone and welcome to the Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. It's the fourth and final round. In fact, we're to the final nine holes and a battle has been brewing. We've got Aaron Gossage, who's been out in front for a couple of days now, but our defending champion, Gannon Burr, trying to catch up to him and even get past him. Meanwhile, hometown favorite, Anthony Barella. Oh wait, should I say Paul Uliberry? I don't know. They're home state favorites and they're here contending, trying to take down the Memorial Championship. Joining me in the booth again is Gannon Burr. Gannon, front nine. We've seen a few missed putts from you. We've seen a few miscues by Gossage. And Yuli's been playing very clean. So we got a little mix of everything in this front nine. Yeah, we do. Scores are still pretty tight here. Yeah, which is incredible to see. And I think... Anyone that's out there in person or has been following along says, yeah, this this is the battle I want to see. Yeah, and AB is definitely not out of it. I mean, he is six back, but we finished this, this course with two island holes back to back. That could be four stroke swing as quick as you can blink your eye, you know. Yeah, and that, that has to be always in the back of your mind at this point then, oh, right? Yeah. It's I mean, just knowing there's, there's no lead that's truly safe. Yeah, I mean, in my mind, I might I might not make the island on either of those holes. And so it's in my mind that a five stroke lead might be the only that, that's safe. What I, that's what right? I was about to say is <laughs> if I'm up five, I know I can't lose because then it's okay. just you go to the drop zone, you lay up. Uh, obviously up two right now, so I got some work to do if I want to get to there. And this is crushed. Oh put and hits the tree and still is I don't know, hundred and fifty feet further than everyone else. It's laying the smack down with the forehand there by Gossage. I don't Man. love this play here, honestly. I'm not going to lie. You just worried that it brings both left and right side, even long OB into play. Is that the problem? Yeah. Or it is just, it just too tough? It to just seems control? like it can kind of get away from you a little bit. Okay. Where you know he could have just thrown a turnover fairway or a turnover mid range and maybe breach the basket as well. Uh, obviously, if you have the forehand, that's going to be the play. Paul is a little bit too short there, but AB has the power to go, honestly go over everything to put himself, you know, right there, about 30 feet. And playing this hole in person is a lot tighter than I thought it was when I was watching on camera before I came to this tournament. It's a lot harder to keep it in bounds than you would think off the tee shot even. And, yeah, that one it wasn't great out of my hand. Obviously still 30 feet away, but I knew it was short. Kind of landed about 50 feet short, skipped up, and got a little bit of a roll to, you know, 30 feet. But still not the putt you want after having a pretty wide open approach. And Aaron's going to go with this zone OS again and play it to perfection. Yeah, and talk about breaking down a 651-foot hole. I mean, that was just a little pitch to the pin after that big drive you mentioned. Yuli with his third now. Maybe from just outside the circle, air mail. It's going to leave him a pretty similar range comebacker, about 30 feet, which is where I am at. i got a right-to-left wind coming off my shoulder here, so I know the putt's going to lift a little bit. So I just putted a million miles an hour so nothing happens to uh, it. Yeah, I mean, you're just jamming it in at that point. And is that trying to just keep the variable of the of a wind bounce or an airlift or anything like that? Is that what you're trying to avoid? Uh, some of that, and then also have to do with nerves. Uh, I feel like, you know, if I putt harder, it makes it a little bit easier to kind of, you know, get rid of those nerves. Uh, having a soft and slow motion is very difficult to be accurate, I feel like, unless you have a very good rhythm. That's why spin putting when you're nervous is like, extremely difficult because you have to have that rhythm and great timing. Uh, it's very specific. And so there I'm kind of just popping it, putting it in the general airspace of where the putt needs to be and giving it a good chance to go in the basket and obviously with the wind, just hoping it's going to drop in at the right time. As Paul and Aaron tap out, Aaron is going to card the birdie and Paul for the par. And we start our way back on hole number 11, 759 feet. Are you, th are you thinking birdie? Uh, you know, kind of gauge how difficult you would assess this hole. Uh, it's definitely one of the harder par fours. 
Uh, I do think Birdie on this hole. I, I Yesterday I went with the PD right down the middle. And unfortunately Skipto will be left. We have a little more of a left-right wind. Yesterday we had tailwind. So with this shot right here, I know I'm going to throw it flat out of my hand. And so the wind's not going to affect it. But the second it gets to Heiser, it's going to slam it. And so it kind of makes it impossible to go OB left as long as you throw it flat out of the hand. Aaron did not hang this out wide enough. And also had some Heiser out of the hand, and that went OB. So Luckily, bad. he did make the Mando, but just going to be able to take it out from right there. He's still going to have a chance to save his par. Yeah, plenty of distance, and should have a good angle, but still, out of bounds. You can see there, AB puts a little more of a knife Heiser on it. So out of the hand, it's actually slamming down by the wind, where mine kind of carried forward. Uh, AB's got a lot more power than I do, so he's able to get the same exact distance as I, ha I have. <laughs> and he's able to keep it on highs the entire time. And Yuli has less distance than me and is going to go with a little bit of a flatter line. And is going to throw it just as far. Three very different ways to arrive at a similar spot. He's also going to take a kind of a unique approach here. We're going with the Spike Heiser. I can see why, though. He had a kind of an awkward angle, sloping left to right, and that's an amazing shot. Great trust on that one. It can easily hang it too far right and then never come back in bounds. Or if it comes in too flat, I feel like it can just, you know, ramp right down and oh, then yeah. skip out of bounds. For sure. I had a slightly better angle than Paul did, and I'm going with my method again, my overstable mid, and throwing it right onto the right side of the hill, and knowing he's going to slide back down. Very similar to how hole 16 plays here. You kind of just throw it up high right, and then naturally the back end's going to slide down to the left, and that's going to leave me 15 feet for a birdie. Oh, and gosh, it's going for the recovery shot and catches the first tree available. Yeah, I, I was a little bit confused on what he was going with there. I still don't really know what his idea was. I think probably pretty similar to what Paul was doing, but uh, I don't – I guess I wasn't where he was at, but I couldn't really see the angle he had. And an AB going to throw a pretty good shot right there. Lake it a little bit long, but honestly, putting this hole is good. Now the low line drive coming out of Gossage. Going to try and maybe ride some of that hillside, but that feels like it dried up short, and I guess there's the answer. We're looking at 11 meters here. And he's got to make this putt to just stay within four. And just like that, I'm going to have it a chance to go up by five with seven holes remaining. That's got to feel good. But like you said, five is almost the magic number you need with two holes left to play. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it, it kind of puts me in a weird position where, you know, if I was only up one or two, I have to keep, you know, playing aggressive. and still going for those birdies because I can't let someone catch me. But when I'm up five, I kind of just want to preserve the lead. And at a course like this where there's a lot of OB, and to get the birdies, you have to throw close to the OB, it actually makes it really difficult to, uh, you know, kind of make those tough decisions. And so I feel like from now on, my, my goal is just to play steady, make sure I do not take any bogeys. That's going to, you know, drop my chances of winning by quite a bit as long as, uh, you know, Basically, in my head right here, I'm just telling if I have to match him on every single hole, that's my goal. And hopefully just let the holes run out at that point. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, you're just waiting for the holes to run out is the best way to word that. I, I completely understand that. And, uh, yeah, that's going to hurt the scorecard there. Rough stretch of a few holes there for Aaron as I gained six on him in those last three holes. Wow, creating some separation as we head over to hole 12. And we've seen people just absolutely get destroyed here on hole 12 for lots of different reasons, whether it's from the tee shot and then a drop zone or even getting on the green and then launching it over and finding OB. There's trouble everywhere. It seems unassuming, but this is really difficult. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, we actually have a little bit of a helping wind, I'd say, is okay. a left to right uh, headwind. So you can kind of rip it. No, it's not going to go OB left as long as you throw it good. Uh, I'm going with my new Sea Lion FD1, which honestly I put in my bag for a water disc for this tournament okay. because, you know, they're really easy to find. You know, they're all the exact same. So uh, I have no problem losing one. And uh, now it's like my favorite disc. So 
<laughs> well, keep it out of the water. As I know. You're on the green or at the edge of the green, and A.B., he's going to dry up short to that right side. Uh, and this, this pin is very hard to make putts on. I mean, it's really windy, one of the windier parts of the course. There's not a ton of trees or hills in the way to block the wind. And you got that OB within 25 feet of the basket where, I mean, when you have a basket this elevated with the wind, if you miss your putt, you're probably going to go OB. Paul going nuke right here, throwing it pretty good. Going to leave himself just inside the circle for a birdie. And the wind is at its maximum that we've seen today. Yesterday it feels like this was the constant wind, but today this is uh, all the way turned up. Great shot from Aaron. This is like his perfect distance for that disc. That's his overstable fairway driver. He can just rip as hard as he can, and it's going to you know, kind of be perfect. That's like my favorite thing in disc golf is when you have a, a hole that fits a disc amazing. And uh, for him, it's this hole. Yuli is short off the front of the cage. Uh, Anthony actually had stepped up and also put it right next to the basket or pretty close uh, during an approach. So now here you are, birdie luck. Staring at death right here. How, how much is that, are those branches you know, either in your line? Uh, none at all. Okay. <laughs> what okay. a baby. I mean, you're not doing that with a one-stroke lead, right? You're not doing no, that all no. tied up. I think if I'm up two or three, I might even be going for it. But okay. being up five, I mean, like I said, th this this putt here is no guarantee either. And so I got to look at it as if, you know, obviously worst case, I'm losing one stroke. Keep the stress level low. That way I can focus and put my energy towards other important shots. You have to wonder what Aaron was thinking the moment he saw you just pitch it under. And he's thinking, wow, he's, he's going to give me a chance here yeah, to get one it's back. It's definitely an opening, and this is a, a, a way to kind of, you know, say that he's still here. He's still here to battle. Very <laughs> confident putt. Never a doubt. It's always scary here in the goose. <laughs> And, and we'll just call it like we have seen all week long. You were very well received last year here at the Memorial on the mic. Parker Welk has joined me on the mic for some Arizona events. He's been well received. Gossage, Aaron Gossage this week in the Goose has been well received. And uh, it, it's really exciting to have you guys team up with me on any given event to come in and uh, be part of the commentary. And people really love to hear your insight. So I know the world appreciates it. Well, I know we all appreciate you having us here. <laughs> well, thank you. As we're on hole 13, I, I don't know. I'm going to call it a bonus birdie. I say it all the time. I mean, it's so rarely birdied. And only if you have a big arm or are, are you a little bit silly in the head, are you running at a long putt here, right? Yeah. It's, it's very hard to park. Um, this one's actually helping us left to right, so it's slamming our disc down. Uh, Vista kind of plays first nine holes going one way and the other nine holes going another way. It's kind of a line. Um, that's just an insane shot. And at this point, I'm definitely getting a little bit nervous because I know for a fact I'm playing this hole safe. This is another hole in my head where there's just a lot of danger. Going with that same PD2, you know, maybe I shank it a little bit right and give myself a, you know, a park job like Aaron, but uh, playing safe. It, it looks close to the OBU there, but really never had a chance to go OB. And that's going to leave me with another decision. AB going, like I said, more knife, not more knife, hyzer angle there. Pretty common theme. If I throw a flat nose up over stable disc, he's going to throw a knife hyzer. <laughs> it's just a couple different ways to you know get toward the ground as quick as possible. Uh, yesterday, I think we saw ten birdies here, was so just about ten percent of the field, and today it's playing right now is the second yeah. most difficult hole on the course. Uh, hole yeah. nine being the only one that was more difficult. So. Uh, the fact that Goose is right there, like you said, has to instill a little bit of second guessing in your mind. And even just looking at, you know, him, Goose getting the last the last hole as a birdie, me getting a par, and then he's yeah. about to get another stroke on me if I'm not able to execute my putt. And obviously I wasn't because I laid up in a half of a second. Yeah, when's the last time? I think there's the there's a trivia question oh, for no. Stat Mando. When's the last time you had back-to-back -back layup putts from Circle's Edge? 
oh gosh, a while. That's <laughs> like I've always been known as an aggressive putter, and I've I've always kind of uh, described it as oh unfortunate roll there for AB. About the worst reaction you can get off the cage. Uh, but I've, I've described being aggressive as it only pays off as good as you are, and so if you're a really good putter, it actually might be worth it to go for putts like that, as long as you make more than you miss. And the same goes for maybe going for an aggressive shot off the tee, uh, playing to a different landing zone that's maybe lower percentage but higher re reward. And uh, you know, but like I said, putting hasn't been feeling great. So in my head, my percentage of making it is lower, and so I'm gonna lay it up. Just gonna play smart. Like I said, that's my goal this season is just to keep it low stress, don't drop strokes. If anything, let the others around me fall. And, uh, you know, just play steady and get a couple birdies around. With these days on the Pro Tour, you, you don't have to shoot that hot to stay in the mix. I mean, if you average six to eight under a round, you could even win the tournament. Yeah, and we saw that uh, just as you mentioned over at chess.com a couple weeks ago or last weekend. Uh, Aaron was one of only four players in the whole field to get the birdie on that previous hole. So he's got to be feeling the momentum right now. He struggled on on 11 but then comes back on 12 and 13 picking up strokes on you on both of those holes and just five holes left to play and all you're thinking is are, are, is this thing done yet can, no can i, I mean, hold him at off at this point I'm, I'm feeling pretty nervous actually because <laughs> he's got nothing to lose he has to go for the win he's actually going nuke here i think trying to go for the green which he can reach and just burns it over it's not not a terrible decision at all because if he does that i i think he knows that Burning it over is the correct miss because it, worst case he's in the fairway. Maybe you know maybe he's able to throw a really good shot and give himself a putt. Uh, this actually kind of leaked a little bit left on me, gonna pinch off my angle. Move was moving toward the OB, uh, but this this hole offers a weird challenge for myself, knowing that I'm up three strokes. But it's a very easy hole, uh, and the challenge is you gotta birdie it because I know Aaron's going to. Yeah, this is the third easiest, and Aaron had said yesterday that. It, you have to get this hole. I mean, this is just right there. It's uh, very straightforward, a little over 600 feet. Just one of the softest par fours you could ask for. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm just throwing a chip shot off the tee and then throwing a chip putter here. Just a standstill. Asking for that to dig, and well, there you go. Job well done. That should put some pressure back on Gossage to execute because you're definitely going to be picking up a birdie. I hope so. Yeah, well. <laughs> Assuming we don't see any more of those air balls. I know. You never know. You could air ball <laughs> from 10 feet. <laughs> AB, with that same uh, putter he's been throwing, he just throws it like butter every time. <laughs> Great shot. And maybe uh, Aaron here took it pretty seriously when I said during commentary yesterday that I want to see someone drive this pin and like just make a decent length putt. I don't want to just see a throw in for Eagle. I want to see someone drive the pin. So maybe maybe he was trying to accept the challenge. Either way, he's got a little work left. Yeah, I've noticed this ground is about as fast as it gets on the course. I mean, I, I remember throwing a putter yesterday about 40 feet short and it skips up to about parked uh, with no speed. Just gets there really quick. Yuli, 40 footer here. Uh, didn't look that bad out of his hand like I was standing behind him again. It just didn't quite get the fade on time. Just slightly late on that one. And Aaron is going to have definitely a tester putt here. The wind's swirling. See it on some of our shirts there. Makes it very hard to even know where to aim. Jams it in, as you would say earlier, just a very confident stroke there. Sounds like there's some second guessing of the wind and the swirls that you just mentioned. But <laughs> Yeah, Yuli was talking to me like, I put it in the middle of the basket and it lifts, I put it at the <laughs> band and it still lifts or something like that. And he's just feeling Perplexed. like maybe yeah. the wind isn't reacting how he feels like it should. And this is actually kind of unfortunate because the wind started to pick up again right as he stepped up. Light reset. And then realizing, well, eh, 
I'm just going to have to pot because this isn't going away. Solid pot. So, Yuli five under, bogey free. And having a pretty solid round going at the, at the moment. Wind picks up again. You know, if this is a different round, maybe round one, I wouldn't think too much about it. But coming down the stretch, every stroke means so much. And I had a tailwind off my right shoulder. You never know if this could, like, lift into the band or drop out of your hand. Uh, I mean, definitely get a dead center spit out is also possible. Well, you had good pace on that one. So you're going to pick up the birdie as well. That's going to match Gossage. But Gossage has the last three in a row. So he's on a turkey right now as you guys are heading over to hole 15. Yeah, definitely heating up. And hole 15 is the last par four you'll play. This hole, we have seen Anthony Barella two in the past. Where was that coverage? Uh, I guess the Disc Golf Guy YouTube channel. Oh, okay, okay. Solid My plug, good setup. My favorite YouTube channel. Oh, oh, come on, keep going. All right, so yes, uh, certainly it could, uh, you could get a drive there if you're throwing the massive roller like Barella. I mean, to be fair, we've never seen anything even remotely as impressive as the drive that he put on that one. And then he made the huge putt for it. Gossage, uh, working, working the tee pad here. Is this one a little extra slick? Uh, he slipped a couple times on his warm-up throws, which th that's kind of a bad indicator of the – I mean, good indicator of the tee pad being bad, I mean. Uh, no problem there. Commits to it fully. Aaron's got one of the biggest forehands in the world. This – this tee shot's really a piece of cake for him. Gonna leave him in a pretty good position, either go low skipper or over the top. And this is actually one of my favorite shots in disc golf is just a slightly understable driver thrown flat, and it just turns the whole way. Now, we did have a pretty strong head left to right wind, so I think I threw it good if there was no wind, but obviously the wind was still there. The one mistake you cannot make is fading out left OB early, which I end up doing in the final round last year, I believe, and big mistake there. I don't want to be doing that. And so I wanted to make sure that, that didn't happen again. And AB is going for the roller. He didn't throw this very well. He threw it over the tree, which is insane. <laughs> Only 0.0001% of the population can do that. And just compare the arm speeds that we just saw yeah, that. Yeah, I know, it's the, crazy. The roller from AB, his attempt, versus what we're seeing from Yuli. But looks like advantage Yuli right now. This is why disc golf is <laughs> is so the fun. The best sport ever is yeah. because something like that can get a better result than more power. It's just so so many good techniques you can have in disc golf. Different ways to approach holes, attack holes, and everyone can kind of play their own game. Oh, I'm going low here. Yeah, I, I think uh, Spicy thought you were going to take the high route. And then ultimately, you kind of go with the low line drive. That gets a good forward skip and maybe not as much flare as you needed, but uh, ultimately it gives you a look for birdie. Yeah, I was talking to my caddy Matt on that shot, whether, you know, to go inside or outside of that big tree right there at the bottom, the white one. And uh, we kind of agreed to go outside just in case with the OB. And great shot there from Aaron. It's going to put pressure on me to make my putt or I will only be up two strokes going into the last three holes, which is definitely no guarantee. One bad tee shot, and it's back to, back to tied on one of the two island holes. And AB gets his to fall out of the sky, so he also will have a birdie luck. Uh, pretty impressive. We got, of course, Paul out here on the lead card, and. Pete Uliberry, his brother, doing some work over there in MP40. And we're going to have some MP40 action to release. We're also going to have all of the FPO division to release coming out in the next few days. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Oh, I really thought I made that putt. That was a weird release by you. It like was. It, it look looked like, like I was just extended. tossing it like a tortilla to a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Tortilla tossing. Well, I do talk about that because I, <laughs> I have been in the backyard and just chucking up putts like that, and I make a lot of them. And that one, I was super nervous. I was like, just relax. Thought I made the putt. 
Nice step there from AB. That's his money range. He's been putting amazing from that range. Just outside the circle, can fully commit to the putt. And when you have your momentum moving forward like that, it makes it really easy to almost make the putt feel shorter in a way. Yuli trying to push to six under on the round. Oh, but off the top band. <laughs> you can hear some frustration uh, possibly with the wind reads or the wind reactions, however you want to look at it. But now Gossage stepping up and the opportunity to pull within two. This is a huge butt for Gossage. A lot of pressure on this one. This will kind of give him some confidence moving forward if he's able to put this one in, knowing that I'm going to be taking a par on this hole. And he's been charging ever since he's been down five money and that's his fourth in a row so after giving you some cushion he's saying hey I'm right here and anything is possible and I know the gallery is just thinking what what are we seeing like it looked like this was all in your favor and just like that Gossage has kind of turned the momentum back in his court yeah I now, have, haven't even been making mistakes I've been playing clean like I, like yep. I wanted to I knew if I got a couple more birdies I could seal the deal but I mean, in my in my mind, it's low percentage that he'll be playing perfect, and he's been doing it. I know it's a chance. <laughs> it it's crazy how it works. If if you're the person leading, it almost always feels like the person behind you is going to play perfect. And so that's the difficult part about disc golf these days is you gotta you gotta stay on top of your game. I mean, that just shows the true potential of Aaron Gossage being able to come back from something like what happened on hole nine and hole eleven to still just have amazing confidence and battling back like crazy never giving up is just a great great sign of a good player throwing his more overstable buzz OS here I believe he went flippier yesterday and kind of threw it too far to the right nice little tree kick there gonna give him a much shorter putt than what he would have had I believe it still would have stayed in bounds but uh, he's gonna have just outside circle putt yeah looking directly up the hill and we saw back at Shelly Sharp when AB found his sweet spot on that top right side of the hill. Today he's going to be at the bottom looking straight up. Yeah, I, I like the play AB goes with here uh, with the flippy mid. You definitely want to be drifting into the right side of the hill because, honestly, we're going to see with this shot right here what I mean. Going with my Glow MD3 again. Thro almost perfect hits underneath the basket. And that's going to scoot outside the circle. That's how steep this green is, is if you miss your miss your angle or miss your landing zone by like one foot, it can end up 30 feet difference. If I just have that turning into the hill instead of landing flat, I could be parked. But you do have a left to right headwind on this hole. So I kind of thought if I rip my, my mid-range super hard, I might get a little bit of a flip. Uh, that thing held up real nice. Gossage after four in a row. Big putt here for Aaron and... The, the camera really doesn't do it justice on how steep this, this hill is. And now here you are. You appear to be having a conversation. I mean, I'm, I'm guaranteed up to. I could lay this up and, and have a, a guaranteed two-stroke lead. Kind of just weighing the options. Caddy doesn't want me to go for this putt. <laughs> Schleybach says no, and then he turns away. He's not happy with what you're about to do. And I put it in three seconds. <laughs> All right, so that's the the most uh, un-Gannon-like thing ever. You, you whoa, disagree whoa, with the caddy. Whoa. I'm just saying you disagree with the okay, caddy. Okay. And then you step up and you putt within three seconds. Yeah, very very unlikely there. <laughs> yes. Uh, but you can it. That, so I yeah. guess that is like you. But A.B. up the hill. Nice putt there from A.B. That's a good distance. I don't know what it was that the basket just looked huge there. I mean, I would have fully agreed with my caddy if I wasn't feeling good, <laughs> but I think we had absolutely zero wind on that putt, and it was a, you know the one opportunity I'd have to to cash it in. And I, I putted it real quick because I knew I knew that the wind could come back at any time. Yuli making a nice putt there, having a really clean round going on right now. Six under through 16 is very solid. 
Yeah, only about 10% of the field finding birdie here on hole number 16. It's not often birdied, and there's so much danger. And Gossage not out of the out of the woods yet, so to speak. Yeah, I was definitely watching this putt because if he misses this one, it's pretty much over. Oh, but and he he's able it. to hard it. So he's sitting three back with two to go, but like you said, both island greens, and uh, it's going to be crazy to see. And big shout-out to our friends over at Six Sided Discs. You can download their episodes on any of your favorite podcast apps and also find them on YouTube as we head to 17. Uh, this is, I mean, this is just a little chip shot, but it feels like the tournament's on the line right now. Yes, and the wind is ripping. We got a left to right wind pushing our discs up and over to the right, so you got to keep it nice and low. AB going to go with the same play I'm going to go with, and you can see this disc just getting lifted immediately out of his hand. He's going to find the out of bounds and he's going to put him at a 45 foot death putt drop zone. And I know in my mind, at this point, if I make the island, I pretty much win the tournament. Uh, I guess I need a birdie to for sure you know, seal the tournament. But if I make it worst case, it's a playoff if I mess up. And this is, I think, the worst shot I threw all tournament. And it came at the <laughs> worst time. You say that all the time. But, yeah, this one, yeah, out of bounds. I mean, that didn't really even have a chance. No, it wasn't even close, not even for a second. I didn't even want to watch it. That's how bad it was. <laughs> I just didn't throw it down. you got to be throwing this down and really following through and down. And, and Yuli does a good job of throwing really overstable, keeping it lower. Beautiful shot there. Putting it right next to the basket putting together a pretty solid round. We're gonna put him at seven under. So there's hope for Gossage here. He's trying to capitalize. We've seen him do it before. He hangs it out wide, track into the pin, and parks it. Yeah, I, I knew right, right as I threw OB, he was gonna park it, and you know, it, it's in my head, ugh, big mistake, knowing that I'm only gonna be up one going into the final hole. and. Here's the danger of running the drop zone putt. It's a downhill death putt, like I said. Going to air it over the basket. Uh, didn't even get my layup on camera because no. th there was no decision. It was <laughs> no no thought in my mind I was going to lay that up no matter what. I still have a one-stroke lead going into 18, so if I get the birdie, I win no matter what. Another island hole. But, uh, I mean, this got interesting really quick. It certainly did. That's everything we've been talking about is the, the battles. Of, of course, Aaron starting out with a little bit of a lead, then you working into a five-stroke lead in your favor, and now we're one island hole away from a potential playoff or crowning a new champion. It's yeah, in my mind, it's somebody's going to win. There's not going to be a playoff because okay. if I throw OB and Aaron parks it, he wins. If Aaron throws OB, I win. It's, you know, unless, unless there's a weird case where we're, we're both in bounds. Yeah. And, you know, one person gets the birdie, one person doesn't. So well, we see the new hole 18, which was just introduced a few weeks ago at the Shelly Sharp Memorial. And it's like you just said, an island green. You go to a drop zone if you go out of bounds, but it's coming from a different angle than what we're used to seeing over the last 10 or 15 years. We got a big headwind right here. All the gallery hanging out right behind the basket. And Yuli's trying to pump up and over the tree. High and wide with the driver, playing it to perfection. Incredible. What a round by Paul Uliberry. Yeah, very solid tournament there from Paul Uliberry. Good to see him shooting well early season. This is the biggest shot of the tournament for Aaron. Looking to apply pressure. Your leader after three days trying to hunt down a win. Oh, and it's over the top and out of bounds. And we didn't actually know at this point whether it was inbounds or out of bounds because he still was on land. And some of the OB lines here are weird with the walls that they sure. place. So, but, you know, I wanted, I wanted to make sure. I was like, do we know if that's safe or not? Because that's going to... I mean, not, I guess not really affect my play, but it's just good to know. And I knew coming into this hole, I'm going to throw it really wide. I was going to do this no matter what, whether what Aaron did or, you know, what he didn't do. I knew for a fact I'm throwing this shot wide. And that's my splice. Thanks to Gavin Babcock. Got a sick die on it. And, um, yeah, that's going to seal the tournament pretty much. 
Yeah, with uh, Gossage going to the drop zone and you have the capabilities of just laying it up. We see AB sliding just past the pin. And man, I feel like my heart's still racing after watching all the action and seeing how the round unfolded. Uh, pretty incredible to see, because it felt like this was Aaron's tournament, really, from the early goings. You know, just played so consistent, so solid, but you had other thoughts in mind. Yeah, I mean, I mean it was really just those two holes, nine and 11, that kind of cost him the tournament. Other than that, he played incredible throughout the entire event, having a few really hot rounds and just putting good, playing consistent, and you know he almost felt hard impossible to beat at sometimes when you know he's he's been making putts now you know something he struggled with in the past and now it's a, a weapon that he can use against people um yeah. so i'm uh, sure aaron gossett will get a win this season it's no doubt in my mind it's, his time is coming soon uh but fantastic competitor it's always a pleasure playing with him wow Appreciate you guys for tuning in. While I was editing this, I managed to hit 100,000 subscribers, and it feels all too fitting as you're going to tap in champion again at the Memorial. Two-time, baby. Back-to-back. -back. My new sponsor, Disc Mania. Feels good to have the bag dialed in. And back-to-back. -back. 2024 and back-to-back -back Memorial champion, Shannon Burr. There you have it, Gannon, again, congratulations. I appreciate all of you guys for joining us along this ride. Thanks to the camera crew helping me out. And thanks to all the incredible supporters and sponsors. This wouldn't be possible. Gannon, congrats, my friend. I'm gonna catch up with you after the round. Again, like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. We'll see you next time. Now, a word with Gannon Burr, your two-time Memorial Champ. I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and this is my video blog. Gannon, did you get taller since last? Come on, stop, stop. <laughs> All right, Gannon, champion, yeah. repeat champion. Last year, after the playoff, you said you love this event. You said you'd be back. Everybody says that, but you fulfilled it, and then you come back, and you take it down in dramatic fashion on the last round. How does that yeah. feel? That feels amazing. Uh, Wow, it was such a weird, weird round. Um, I've kind of had putting woes the whole tournament and uh, started off with a little bit of an early putt and uh, airballed another circle one pretty early on. And, uh, you know, but I, I made sure that it, it's never over till it's over. Aaron, unfortunately, had a couple, like two bad holes right in the middle and that, that was pretty much the entire round. Other than that, he played better than me. Um, but I had a putt on 16 right there. Uh, I missed it last year, and I looked at my caddy. There was no wind, and he was like, laid up, dude, laid up. Like I was like, it's right there. Like it looked, basket looked huge. I hadn't been putting good, but the basket looked huge for some reason. Walked up. Uh, after I made my decision, I putted within like five seconds, maybe even shorter. So um, just want to get it out of my head. Made that putt barely over the cage, and uh, threw a horrible shot on 17. Um, I was like, I told my caddy I'm gonna play up to the right because it's the bigger zone, and I just fluffed it, like a complete fluff job. So, uh, but Aaron, yeah, unfortunately, maybe slightly read the wind wrong on 18. Uh, I made, I knew I was gonna play way wide of even where the basket was just in case, because I knew worst case I'd have a circle's edge putt. And uh, man, this is crazy to win back to back. I was just gonna say this event has so much history, and now here you are a back to back champion. What does that mean to you, and what does that mean for your career? Well, I will be back next year, that's for sure. Uh, love it. Yeah, thank you. I uh, love this tournament. And we obviously have a ton of spectators out here that come out, so uh, that's huge for me. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of a fun start to the year. It gets you in that competitive mindset, which is really good moving forward. Uh, I think I can handle it a little bit better next time, but that's just the, the building blocks. And obviously, getting the win with my new company, Discmania, feels amazing. Already feeling good about the plastic. And uh, yeah, be sure to be on the lookout for some of my discs coming out soon. Uh, help support me and see what I have to bag. All right, final question, or the one I'll lob up to you is, what do you want to say to all the people that have been watching this week? They missed you on commentary. When you said you couldn't join me the first night, we pivoted, and it looked like it was going to be Gossage. He was riding the wave all week, but you come out victorious. What do you want to say to everyone that watched this week and all the fans out here today? Commentary tonight? I mean, whatever you want to do, I don't know, but we, we got to get that figured out. But what do you want to say to everyone out here that's been taking in all the action all week? First off, 
I want to thank my caddies. Uh, I had my buddy Jacob Baumer out here. He caddied for me rounds two and three. And then obviously my caddy, Matt, who's with me most places, it feels like now. Uh, Full-time caddy pretty much. He does an amazing job. And he was with me for the first and the final round. So, uh, And shout out to him. He actually won MA40 this week. So we got two Memorial Champs from Iowa and caddy player duo. So that's awesome. And uh, yeah, just thanks everybody. It means so much to have everyone spend their time and come out here to watch us battle. And disc golf's growing. It's getting bigger. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been awesome. So thank you everyone who watched and thanks to my sponsors, Discmania, Squatch Bags. I should have that one coming out soon as well. And uh, Chump Chalk Bags, Titan Disc Golf, and Double G Jerky. So thank you, thank you everybody. And I'll be here next year. All right, you're two-time and now defending 2024 Memorial Champion, Gannon Burr. <laughs> <laughs>